The final episode of Andor Season 1, Rick's Road, was certainly for me the most dramatic and incredible ending to an exceptional Star Wars series. The episode skillfully dealt with the objectives of the fledgling rebellion and the Empire's search for Axis and Cassian Andor, and Mon Mothma's struggle to keep a lid on her efforts to resist the Empire in the Imperial Senate. After Cassian Andor recently learned of his mother's death after escaping from the Imperial prison, the end to Season 1 had an atmospheric tension which simmered beneath the surface of the story for the characters on both sides of the fight. However, the Imperial Security Bureau supervisor, Ded Romero, was hunting Cassian Andor due to his involvement in a rebel heist and his knowledge of the mysterious rebel recruiter, Luthan Rail. Miro suspects Cassian will risk returning home to Ferrix for the funeral, and also does the disgraced ex-security officer, Cyril Khan. The rebels are thinking along similar lines, with Luthan and ally Velsartha on their way to Ferrix, as they previously intended to kill Cassian to keep him quiet. Meanwhile, Mon Mothma attempts to keep her rebel fundraising off the Empire's radar, forcing her to engage the services of sleazy banker Dalvo Skulden. At the beginning of the episode, you could feel the atmosphere of oppression as Dedramira arrives aboard her Imperial shuttle and Bix Kaleen is seen suffering post-torture trauma inside her captive cell. Also seen earlier in this episode, Wilman constructs a bomb to get revenge on the Empire, who killed his father, Pak, earlier in the series by hanging his corpse in the town as a warning to the locals. Captain Vanistigo, having previously agreed to the Phyrexian request for a permit to close Rick's Road, had set up a perimeter to trap Cassian during the funeral procession, and Dedramira gave express orders that Cassian be taken alive so he could identify Axis, also known as Luthien Rail. Cassian moved covertly around the town, connecting with some of his trusted friends, and crucially, he learns where Bix is being held before deciding to free her. Once the anvil from the town's tower begins, it felt the episode's tension began to rise. The anvil's clanging alerts the Imperial garrison that something is happening, and the Phyrexian funeral band began their slow march along Rick's Road. The cunning Ferex locals began the funeral early to surprise the Imperials, who were alarmed by the unexpected numbers of the Phyrexians. Captain Tigo immediately panicked by ordering his garrison security forces to form a show of force visibly to restrict the procession's movements by boxing them in, as Supervisor Dedramiro had previously ordered. However, although Dedramiro thought that Cassian Andor's mother's funeral might draw him out into the open, she underestimated the situation unfolding around her and the rebel activity lurking in the town. Despite her staff's surveillance and building checks upon their intelligence, Andor was always one step ahead. In addition, and separately standing among the crowds, Luthien Rail and Cyril Khan, with the same agenda to eliminate Andor, watched the procession in anticipation for what might transpire. Marva's droid B moved steadily forwards to the front of the funeral band, and united in their grief, the band procession music tempo and their walking pace steadily picks up as they walk towards the Imperial security forces outside their headquarters before they stop close to Tigo's men, starting the Phyrexian crowd to begin continually chanting Stone and Sky, meaning funeral for a rebel. Then the chant stops to allow the droid to project a pre-recorded message from a massive holographic projection of Marva, wearing her Daughters of Ferex robes. She delivers an inspiring speech, and I felt this scene was truly great in the sense her speech reminisced on Ferex culture and summarised how the occupation of the Empire's influence grew and encroached on their lives. However, Captain Tigo loses his patience when Marva's speech begins to turn against the Empire by fighting them, which sparks the locals to riot. The unrest escalates further when Wilman flings a bomb, setting off several explosions, and Tigo orders his troops to open fire on the crowd. The blaster fire and the explosions in Star Wars would normally wash over us, but in this scene, they feel like a bigger deal because the episode built up the tension so effectively. Amongst the ensuing chaos, Dedramiro's guard were overwhelmed and the ISB supervisor was knocked to the ground by the furious Ferex locals. However, just when you thought Dedramiro might be trampled over and killed, she was rescued and taken inside a building at gunpoint. Her immediate reaction was to fight for her life by grabbing the nearest object to strike her captor. However, in those moments of sheer fear, she saw Cyril Khan. The scene was truly extraordinary in that Khan had gone to such lengths to ensure he could even be on Ferrix, but his strange obsession with Dedra and his grievance with Cassian Andor compelled him to save the ISB agent. Meanwhile, realising Luthan had missed his chance to kill Cassian, he stealthily travels back to his ship. With the Empire distracted by the riot, Cassian rescues Bix and gets her back to a ship to join B, Brasso, Wilman and some of his other friends who managed to fly off-planet to safety. 
Is this the last time Cassian will see Bix, B, and the others? It felt oddly final. The episode ends with Cassian surprising Luthen upon his ship and confronting him about coming to Ferrix to kill him. Cassian gives Luthen the choice to kill him or take him in, meaning he will join the rebellion against the Empire. A truly memorable series which makes me feel I cannot wait for the next season, and I hope we can continue to follow many of the characters too, especially Dedramiro. For more Imperial Explained videos, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, long live the Empire.